Listening to the Atlanta podcast with your host Christian, Justin, and Myron, and we are talking about stuff going on in Atlanta. We are recording on Wednesday, September eighth, at our favorite OTP spot, Good nice. Word, with owner and brewer Todd DiMatteo for our very first episode of Tap Eats, showcasing great spots in and around the ATL. I actually want to qualify that statement right here. For me, yes, this is not only one of my favorite spots. OTP is one of my favorite spots in general. Yes. I love that. Boom. Checks and I can in the mail, say, Myron. I can say they have the best wings that I've ever had. Still the ever. best wings? Ever. I can't say, they're outside the perimeter, so I guess I can't say in Atlanta, but they're the best in the area. Nice. Wow. I'll take that. Wow. Has, <laughs> truth be told, Justin did say, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten all day. But I still, I, I like what you said. <laughs> right. I did it lo- the first time, too, though. That's right. That's right. You're right. This is That is true. No this, is on, this is on your second time here, right? Yeah, this is my second yeah. time. Nice. Yeah. I'm in Riverdale, so it's hard to come up to Duluth sometimes. Oh. It's a nice track. You're almost Florida. It's a track. <laughs> <laughs> might as well be in Florida. <laughs> I'm Justin the Explorer. <laughs> so let's move on to, well, we do have some bites to showcase you guys yeah, yeah. Uh, later to show off, if you will. Um, but first, uh, since we have the brewer here, uh, can you tell us what are we drinking right now? Um, different yeah. options. So you have uh, a Kolsch, and it's called Those Days Are Over. That's a 4.9%. Um, How appropriate. Yes. Yeah, so our f- <laughs> the first Kolsch I made was called uh, Times Like These, mm-hmm. uh, and it's a totally different beer. And then, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, you know, a, a, a nod to where we've been as a society over the last two years basically at this point mm. but anyways crisp it's uh hopefully delicious very delicious and very then, crisp nice and then myron and justin you guys both have treat yourself which is a 3.6 percent uh petite ipa which we yeah. and which we made with uh birds fly south uh and greenville oh shout out to sean down there yeah sean's great sean what's up shout out to sean. Hey, folks one thing I always say about the beer here, it's always clean and crisp. It is. No matter what it is, it's clean, crisp, served in like the perfect glass. And it's, there's a lot of places where I'll go buy a beer, but I don't really care about the experience. But when I buy a beer here, like from the glass, to the beer, like every part of it is just like, it's so good. Yeah, it's I appreciate so that. Good. It honestly takes being super obsessed with making beer and making sure that it tastes you know, exactly how I, or for the most part, exactly how I'm planning for it to, to uh, turn out. And you're, it's, you're, a, it's you're a lot a of work. You're a beer nerd. Yeah, I you're guess so I'm obsessed. <laughs> you would say you're obsessed? Uh, so let me tell you how obsessed I am. I have a book club with other brewers. and a uh book club? Swear Bye. to God. We, we actually met last night. Nerd. Yeah. Uh, we are nerds. So Justin, <laughs> Justin just joined our uh, book club from... Um, Arches. Okay. Uh, and then also we've got Whit Baker from Bond Brothers and then Andy Morrison from Precision Fermentation. And then uh, Ben Dolphins from Divine Barrel. And also Stan Hieronymus, who's like a very well-known, respected uh, beer writer, was also part of our book club. So, yeah, we, we literally will read and discuss books on brewing. <laughs> it's, it's fucking dope. As, do, as dorky as that sounds, it's fucking great. So, I remember so the last so time. Y'all, they all like um, snuggle up on the Snuggies. And no. we're, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not telling campfire stories. We are definitely uh, doing it Zoom. Uh, oh, but yeah, okay, usually okay. crack crack open a beer and kind of shoot the shit a little bit, and then we start talking about you know the chapters we've read and stuff like that. Oh, cool. I remember last time we were here, you said that you were uh, you had you were you were uh, reading a book. On social media too. I have, and read I was a, like, yeah. "Oh, I, I was like, they got books on how to do social media." I re- so that actually changed my life. Thank Is that right? You. Appreciate cool. it. Nice. <laughs> you didn't do anything good for me, to be honest with you. Like I read it, well, and I'm like, "Never mind." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I try with social media, but it's a, you know it's a fickle thing, and uh, yeah, you know I, I love it, but there was times when I would do uh, silly videos, and actually Dev, who helps with you guys, um, shot some videos with us, and shout you know, out to Dev. Dev. Yeah. 
Jim. All right. Go. But uh, yeah. So I think as long as you're having some kind of presence, you got something to say. Um, and putting yourself out there, that's kind of the keys uh, to social media, awesome. I think, for me yeah, at least. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. So how did you get started brewing? Um, so my grandmother is uh, Puerto Rican, and okay. she was uh, definitely the cook in our whole family. And, you know, just being raised and seeing her, you know, kind of how she shared her love for her family was through mm. cooking. Um, I, I kind of took that. And um, I've always been interested in cooking since probably my – early middle 20s and then i got more serious about it and i mean i would spend you know hours trying to perfect a meal my wife even today she's like you like to cook things slow you like to cook shit slow if it takes a long time you're like i'll cook it uh (laughs) which isn't always the case but you know there's a lot of uh you know labor of love that goes on with that but anyway when i was working at uh brick store i started there brick store in in 2005 um, I would say I knew a little bit about beer, but over my time there, I started homebrewing. In the last like four or five years, I was homebrewing anywhere from like one to three times a week, and oh, wow. you know that's a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, and the only way I could get um, some would say an obsession. It was definitely <laughs> obsessed. I mean, if you saw my back porch in Decatur, it was oh, crazy. I was about, to, I, I was about to ask, where do you keep the beer when you homebrew? Uh, so you can do it lots of ways, right? You can put it in you know, a, a basement and then wish for the best, or you can do what I did and build like a fermentation chamber. A lot of guys will cool. do that. You can do it simply or more involved. And mine was, I had two different chambers that were a little more involved. But once you start controlling your fermentation temperature, your beer turns out a little bit better, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, that was kind of my, you know, quick schooling at least on home brewing um and i was able to put beers maybe not so illegally on tap uh <laughs> on so tap. so on thursday we would throw a beer on and it would usually go you know kick in the same night so it allowed me to brew a lot and so that's why i'm saying you know anywhere from you know one to three times a week and then also i'd met a lot of uh other brewers like you know guys at wild heaven three taverns mm-hmm. um i would in southern brewing in athens and uh, creature comforts i would go and try and brew with these guys anytime i could and if they had a pilot system i'd you know bug them to hey can we brew a beer and i'll call it a collaboration we can bring it on a brick store and do this or that yeah. so you know leverage a lot of those um early friendships um that i'd made from brick store to be able to brew a shit ton and make some cool connections and self-taught right Definitely, it yeah. Sounds yeah. Like it. You, you yeah. were like a, a beer samurai just roaming. No, I was. I whatever, <laughs> Yo, whatever the exact, right? whatever the opposite of a samurai is, I was that, uh, for, and still am. But um, but no. So when I was leaving Brick Store, um, I asked uh, Neil and and uh, the guys over at Wrecking Bar if I could go and spend a, no- a month like shadowing Neil and and uh, and Gavin and Justin were all there. And so it was kind of like when you go to Las Vegas the first time, there's always, like, flashing lights and everything's so fast. You're like, ah, everything's crazy. So, like, it, being around that stuff and seeing these guys who are super talented was really good. But I can't say that I wasn't at a place where I could, like, learn because it was just too overwhelming. Oh, you know? okay. And uh, I spent a little time with Mike Casagno um, at Twain's. I spent a few weeks with him. And he was new uh, to Twain's at that point, too. And he was super gracious and kind with me. These guys, honestly, some of these guys who are, um, I consider OGs and friends, ha- were so gracious to me, like, coming up, yeah, you know, sure. five five or uh, six years ago now. And so definitely have a lot of love and respect for him and uh, JR at uh, Max Loggers and uh, Bold Monk. So these guys have helped a lot. There were some of the people that I would text in the beginning and Blake uh, Tears from uh, – Creature converts, I'd bug the shit out of these guys. Yeah. Like, hey, man, I think I fucked something up. I did this. And they're like, yeah, you definitely fucked it up. Go ahead and dump it. I drink it. I'm but, cross out. But anyway, to continue the story, we um, you know, we hired a brewer in the beginning to, to do all this. It wasn't my intention nor my business partner's intention for me to be the brewer. So the really? idea, Yeah, so the what? idea was I'm helping with recipes and ordering raw materials, and yeah. I'll do some brewery stuff. You turn you know. into a manager? <laughs> right. What, well, and then I would be managing the restaurant with my business partner, Ryan. Anyway, when uh, our brewer left, like, abruptly, probably two and a half, three months into being here, I was like, all right, fuck, I, I'm going to go back there and just try not to kill myself for a little while. We'll find somebody else. Were y'all already yeah. open? Oh, wow. Well, yeah, we were already open. We opened in November 2017, and uh, our original brewer, Kyle, left in, um, like, the first week of March 2018. 
Oh, wow. It's oh, yeah. crazy. Like, he'd, he'd be, Brewers are like baseball, like free agents, man. Like, it, I mean, be, we just got them. We drafted them. Yeah. It's kind of crazy how they move around. I mean, honestly, that is perfect. I, I see it on yeah. Instagram. I'm like, oh, they're over there now? Yeah. It's like, it's kind of crazy. So it is. It's, it's a real thing. Well, honestly, that was part of the thing that made me say, I'm not just going to go hire somebody else. I'm going to learn everything or as much as I can about everything back here so I don't ever get put in this spot again where somebody's going to leave me high and dry. Before your free agent leaves you. Before my free agent leaves me, for sure. And, um, you know, three or four months of kind of slowing everything down back there um, and, and, again, trying to learn as much as I could. But I had, you know, Yoron came up and helped me out and Tim Schiavone came and helped me out oh, and no. uh, Austin from uh, Second uh, Second Self came up. You know, they would all come up for like one or two days and kind of, you know, hey, don't hurt yourself. Do this and do that. Yeah. It was a lot. He's skipping over the tears. There were yeah. definitely there was, tears well, in I'll the tell you. story. He's skipping over it. I definitely skipped over the tears. tears. But when would you say you actually came into your own and you felt comfortable and not super overwhelmed? Or yep. do you Yesterday. Now? Yesterday. No, no. No, I mean, you know, here we are. So the first batch I brewed was like batch 35 and I just brewed like batch 253 or something like that so oh, wow. it, you, you definitely learn a lot but I mean it's you know for me it was, it's what I always wanted I wanted to be the brewer um, to be honest oh, with so you, you always wanted it. I wanted it for sure right, it's just cool. I didn't have the experience or any of that kind of stuff and I didn't have the trust from my partners nor did I deserve it at that time to be honest with you so I had to like learn and kind of protect myself a little bit with um, like I'm just gonna fucking do this. But in the beginning, I would work in the brewery till like five every day, and then come and manage on the floor with my my partner Ryan. Oh, wow. uh, so I was doing like 12, 16 hour days every day for like six oh. months. And finally, I was like, I don't think I can fucking work out here in <laughs> front of the house. I'm like, this shit is too much. And so um, yeah, I think honestly, about six months into being back there, I had a handle on it. Um, but again, uh, like we were saying earlier, like I'm constantly reading and trying to pick the brain of smarter brewers and, you know, and when you're me, everyone's kind of smarter. So I'm just <laughs> all ears and trying to, you know, take as much as I can. Yo, any uh, ideas? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's go. But, uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been awesome, man. There was a time that I'll say like, you know, we're getting invited to like Shelton Brothers uh, Festival and. Aslan, all this kind of stuff, and I'd be at these festivals, all these like world famous breweries. Again, world famous in craft beer, like it's just beer famous. As yeah. I tell, as I tell my kids, it's beer famous, baby, and the same shit. <laughs> but um, you know, being in the room with these guys, I'm like, man, you know, we're this tiny little brew pub in Georgia. We don't really belong in this room. I, I don't really feel that way anymore, man. I, honestly, I don't. I feel like we have oh, we've there carved. There we go. There we <laughs> no, go. No, no. I mean, it's like the glow. No, no, but you know this. When you put in, <laughs> brewmaster. Uh, I love it. Awesome. awesome. But you know, after a while, you're like, no, I, I deserve to be part of the conversation, and it's a, a, from honestly being super passionate and a lot of fucking hard work for sure. Well, definitely, the the work has paid off tremendously. For sure. Thank you, all guys. The, I appreciate that. All the beer that. here is great. You have you some know. of the dopest beer and the best wings. Yes. <laughs> nice. Well, he two for two. Wings, and there's also other food, there are which one thing that Justin has not tried that you uh, said is one of your the favorite The tartare. I love it. So uh, so what, what, is, what is this that we have in front So of that's us? beef tartare with a little uh, toasted bread and some cured egg yolk on top. Absolutely one of my favorite dishes. It's a little rich. It's a little salty from uh, the cured egg yolk, and I think there's little capers in there as well. Mm. It's a, co- which, a cobra is in there? No, what there's no okay. Hey, listen. Capers. Don't oh, be afraid, really? Justin. It's your time to shine. You got to oh, eat that tartar. Justin says he's never tried this. I've <laughs> never so this had be a live anything. reaction. Yes. Go ahead, Justin. There it is. Fuck it. We'll do All it right. Get your plate. How do you? I don't even know how to eat it. Just like, like we'll, we'll I said. Do you. We'll do it with you. Oh, yeah, they tried I saw this on Indiana Jones 3, <laughs> and it Once scared we me. Out of this, we'll talk about how all of this came about. All right. But so we're Easily. Gonna, are y'all going to do it, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you, how do you yeah. eat it? How do you eat it? So just take like a little toast and then, yeah, put some on the, uh, some of the tartare on the toast. Yep. Yeah. You're going to love this. There you go. There you go. Get in there. He looks oh, apprehensive, no, but he's. Like, you done fucked it up. There's a lot of pressure now in there. You're just right. You're just, oh, oh my gosh. Oh. (laughs) Sit down. Yeah. Yeah. When you you get it, go back to your seat. We want to see your face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good healthy portion. Is that good? (laughs) That's good. That's good. 
<laughs> Y'all got me really about to eat this, man. You're going to love it. Justin, look. Look, look towards the camera. We, we want to see what you... I mean, you should be used to meat in your mouth, so... It is. <laughs> so... Bad. Not bad. We're so we're not bad. You're not a tartar person. That <laughs> has flavor. There is flavor in there, guys. Flavor. There's flavor in there. No. Okay. I don't know if I got egg. I don't think I got egg. Not bad. Let's see what we're just talking about. I haven't had tartar in years. Is that right? Years, years. I mean, I, I just don't. I, Typically, don't order it if I'm going out. If it's on the menu, I already have my eyes set on something. Yeah. But I mean, I eat it here a lot, and usually when we come here, we're entertaining yeah, so folks, and I'll I'll order here. Usually, I don't order it at other restaurants now though, because I've had it so often oh, here. That's so good. Yeah. Nice. There we go. It was it was tasty. It was tasty. Are you going back you for know, another one or no? But it's like sushi for me. It's like that's I'm not good. I can feel that. Yelling, hey, let's yeah. go get some That is really time. good though. Um, you're not civilized. I get it. There's wings. There's plenty of wings. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm waiting Damn. for. My uncivilized ass with some of them wings. That is really good. But it was actually, no, it was tasty. You guys got to try the uh, gnocchi over there, too. Pork cheek Man. gnocchi. Oh, that's that the other one. I didn't know what that was, too. We got to do that one. We gotta so that. good. That was really good. That was, uh, that was tasty. That was tasty. Save some now. Y'all do stuff at, like, a high level, though. So, like, if I get it from somewhere else, it might be oh, trash. Man. Everything from everywhere else is trash, oh, Justin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm everywhere just like, else. I'm you don't need all that on that bread. That <laughs> awesome. Oh, you have the tiniest little piece of bread. You like? Right in a mountain. <laughs> that is really good. Like I said, one of the best restaurants in general. Thank you, in sir. In Georgia, this food here is crazy. We're going to show you all in a second. But first, tell us about. How did this all come about? Like, what, what? Where were you at when you were like, you know what? I want my own place. Um, so you when, know why? When why? So Ryan and I were working at Brick Store, and um, you know, loved it, but passion to kind of bid us for for brewing one, okay. and so we're like, all right, we want to take what we've learned from restaurants and what we know about the beer world and apply our newfound love for home brewing, for me at least, um, into a brew pub okay. and the laws were changing at that time too or we knew they were about to change um so yeah we started trying to figure out where the fuck we were going to put this thing and we looked all over the place and yeah we landed in duluth but i mean we looked in every neighborhood you can think of and it was either like too expensive or uh the neighbor the neighborhood was like too too early you know what, what were I mean? some of where, what were some of the neighborhoods you went to so we looked, yeah, yeah so we looked at um atlanta dairies uh and that was super dope and we knew like all right this is gonna be cool when it comes and imaginarium landed out there yep, yep. um for us at the time it was a little pricey to be honest with you and we're just like ah this is taking a leap of faith here um was, and the dairies wasn't there right none of it was i mean so <laughs> we were looking at it and we we're looking at like paper and they're like and then it's going to be this great thing. And I'm like, holy shit, this sounds cool. My imagination, I'm not seeing all this shit yet. And, and the dollar signs is always good to see. Y'all opened up 2017, right? Yes. So for viewers, if you don't know what or where the Atlanta Davis are, it's Memorial Drive. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that's where I, we lived there for, ago. yeah, and we lived there like seven, eight years ago. So I'll submit, and that's where I lost. Southside South Side Memorial Drive? <laughs> no. Memorial no. Drive. Yeah. Yeah. I remember driving by, and I was just like, was there a there was a dairy farm here? Right. What is, yeah. What is going on? Yeah, it was crazy. I didn't know we got milk from here. <laughs> False. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh, then we looked in East Lake. Actually, and I went to some like town meetings in East Lake, and we're like, oh, all right, wow. this is where it's gonna be. Like, I was dead set. I was like, cool. I have to leave Decatur. I'm in my own little bubble still. And the building we want uh, wanted there. You know, it was a cool space, but there wasn't much parking, and it was a oh, garage parking. before, so we'd have to, like, change the uh, zoning. And oh. then the guy who was, like, you know, renting or leasing the buildings to us gave us all this, like, shark vibes, and we're like, nah, he's, like, missing a finger and shit. I'm like, this guy, he's missing a finger. He's got, like, super nice clothes, nice guy. I'm like, this motherfucker has not paid all his debts. Yeah, I don't oh, trust shit. That's a, crook. that's a crook for sure. He's, he was slick. He was a slick talker, but he definitely couldn't point in the right direction because <laughs> he was missing that one finger. It's like somebody took that. He owed some money. Anyway, it's terrible, yeah. uh, but his finger was lost. But, um, 
So anyway, East Lake was kind of where we put our, you know, eggs in the basket, so to say. And we, we came out to Duluth pretty early on. And this whole side, we had like, uh, it was brand new. Like everything had been demolished. And, you know, looking out, when we came out and looked at it, I think it was like 2016, something like that. And uh, this was like a strip mall before, but they had just knocked it all down. And I definitely shit it all over it. I was like, no, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to leave and be OTP because there's this OTP ITP segment. Everybody oh, knows yeah, about. Yeah, you live in the true. city, you're like nothing happens OTP. It's be for the highway, nothing else. And uh, you know, I had that same mentality. And uh, you know, after looking around for a while, we came back out here. Ryan, my business partner, lived maybe like ten minutes from where where we are right now. He's like, man, come out for this concert. It was a free concert in the little square out here. And there was like maybe 8,000 people. Again, this is like 2016. Well, 8,000, wow. that's a lot. It was crazy. That's I was like, holy shit. It was super dope. It was a driving and crying concert. And I was like, all right, there's a ton of people out here. Fuck it. And so I convinced my wife to start looking, because like I said, we live in Decatur, to start looking uh, out here for a house. Mm. She's like, mm. out where? Exactly. <laughs> right. She was like, hell no. We're not moving out there. No fucking way. We spent like six or seven Sundays in a row in our uh, Tacoma. Like four hours a day with our four hours every Sunday for you know two months. Wow! And uh, finally found the place that we live now. We, we we love it. We actually bought our house. I want to say it was like two months before we signed the lease on this building. My business partner's like, "Why are you buying a house? We no one is sold on this right. yet. We're still talking about it." I'm like, <laughs> "Fuck it. Me and Ryan are doing this. This shit is gonna happen." And so we went ahead and you know we we bought the house and then we signed the lease. But I'll be honest with you, it was. Again, I still miss being inside the uh, perimeter, and some things I'm like, ah, I'd be cool if we were inside, blah, blah. But we built such a great and have become such a part of uh, the community out here. And Duluth in general is it's awesome. It really is. And I get it. Like, I'm closer to 40, or I'm uh, 41 now. So if I was 21 or 30, I'd be like, nah, man, I don't want to live in the burbs. Yeah, but I got right. three kids, and... I own a business out here. Like this is this is my home. I yeah, love the way it. those kids set up. Yeah, and they, <laughs> yeah. Make think different. And you was you yeah. was like really really helping the community too because I remember the pandemic started and y'all was just like giving out meals. Like you weren't allowed to open or was it something like that? Well, or? so we I remember it was like March fifteenth. It was like a Sunday, and I was uh, Ryan and I were talking. I was like, man, I I think we need to close. Um, the business, this COVID is scary as fuck. You know, everybody's glued to the TVs watching the news. It was crazy. And uh, we were one of the first folks to close, you know, because we thought we should. We thought it was the right thing. We're like, all right, we're closing, and we don't even know if we're going to open <laughs> back up. Because it's a scary thought as a business owner. Like, all right, Absolutely. we're going to intentionally close our doors because we think it's the right thing to do. Uh, meanwhile, we don't know if we're going to be able to open back up. And we had just flipped our menu the week before. So we had, like, Maybe six, eight thousand dollars worth of, you know, inventory from food and shit oh, that we just ordered, Ooh. and so we closed on that Sunday and um, Sunday or Monday, I forget. Anyway, and we told the staff like, "Hey, come in and you know take some of this food home. We don't want it to spoil." And so, over the next like two or three days, other places were closed. And we're like, "Listen, if you work in a restaurant and you're hungry, come and get some of this food. We don't want it to go bad." And then that had kind of snowballed into like, hey, listen, if you're fucking hungry and you don't have a job or whatever, you know, come and we're going to feed you. And so, that's awesome. yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that's, it just felt like one of those things like bro. we're not doing it to, you know, rah, rah. We're just like, all right, we first off don't want to lose product, like throw it away. Right. And two, it's like, well, people are in fucking need. And so we just started doing it. And then we started making the uh, um, soups. <laughs> we started making a new soup every day. Me and Ryan would come in and. Our, I swear to God, we would like turn into an. It has somehow become like this soup kitchen, and um, you know, I was I'd do a post on social media every day. I was like, "Hey, today's soup is this. If you're hungry, come and come and get soup." Do you remember some of the soups, or yeah, I mean, there were a lot of chicken noodle soups. Um, noodle can't go wrong. Tomato with it. soups. There was a lot of vegetarian, and so we got to a point where I was like, "All right, Ryan, you do a veggie soup, and I'll do a meat soup, meat soup, and then we'll rotate every other day." Nice. And so, what was crazy though is. Oh, so y'all were cooking the soup. Me and Ryan you would and cook Ryan. the soup, and then you we brewing were brewing and cooking. We were not brewing at a time. <laughs> oh, for, well, <laughs> cooking and cooking. No. Yeah, <laughs> for about four to six weeks, we were just doing a soup kitchen. That's and cool. um, and anyway, yeah, we were crowling beers and selling beers to try to you know make the ends meet. There's a glass in the way. Sorry, 
Dev's yelling at everybody. Dev, stop yelling at us. <laughs> He's directing. He's directing. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. But, uh, thank you. But anyway, so we were, uh, you know, making these soups. And, you know, we started reaching out to um, Mills by Grace. Because it was like, you know, this is a local um, soup or um, pantry. And they do, like, clothes. They do anything uh, anything that they can do for um, for folks around here. Yeah, they, yeah. they donate. So I was just calling them up. I'm like, hey, listen, I've got, like, you know, 60 things of soup if you guys want it. And so they came, like, every week they would come by. Nice. Oh, awesome. And uh, what's crazy is we actually... Um, to kind of fast forward, so we did eventually come back on and start doing to go uh, food and stuff like that, and then we slowly opened back up. But uh, Planters Peanuts, all right, Planters Peanuts was doing this thing instead of spending however many millions that I was on Super Bowl, they wanted to uh, give people uh, money. Like they picked 20 winners, I think, that 50K um, was a prize for wow. each, each of the winners. Anyway, it was on Twitter. And, so, and somebody, they were like, basically, hey, anyone who's helped the uh, folks in the restaurant industry in need, like, tell us, you know, their story and who they are. And somebody put us on there and then, like, kept getting retweeted. And then they reached out to us and, like, hey, you're a winner. And I was, I was oh, like, wow. no, we're not. Click. Yeah. This is some bullshit. You're not getting my social security number. <laughs> <Right. Click." laughs> but, but anyway, it was real shit. It took, um, took a minute to convince uh, me and my business partners, like, all right, this is real. This person's not trying to steal our identity. And they sent us a check for 50K, and then we gave – 5k of that back to um uh mills by grace so yeah wow. and that's yeah yeah it's awesome. just one of those things yeah it's a chance when d's nuts is actually good you're right <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> that's what's up Planters Planters peanuts Planters? thank you very much yeah. so good Shout out to yeah now going back to like when you guys like opened this up like how was the like how was the opening like was it did it was it received well did the it opening out, oh man the opening was crazy so it was the opening is definitely pretty dope, but um, we had some trials and tribulations. Our first chef was kind of a wreck and didn't make it past the first week. Oh, it was like man. one of those guys that you see like on Gordon Ramsay's show, you know, throwing the food and just screaming at people. Uh, so anyway, it oh. didn't work out well. And so we actually didn't have um, Brian Crane, who's our chef now, for like the first six or eight months. Oh, he, wow. Yeah, he'd worked um, at, on the line at Leon's years ago. And so Mike Ooh, Gallagher, yeah. one of Leon's our partners. full service down in Decatur. Also great, awesome. Great place. So Mike, um, one of our business partners, um, had a relationship with him. And he's like, you know, working at this place called Gabe's or whatever. And he comes up once or twice. And, you know, we all kind of fall in love with this guy. And, yeah, I think it was eight, nine months in. And ever since then, we had taken this amalgamation, this weird kind of mini that we had. Because it was kind of Latin inspired in the beginning from my upbringing from uh, – having a Puerto Rican grandmother, but then, you know, he's like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to make this work and be more cohesive instead of, you know, Latin this, Asian this, Southern this. And so now there's flavors from kind of where he's been, but the, the food, I don't know. I'm trying to summarize it. It's, it's definitely like an elevated Southern food. And I, mm-hmm. I don't know how better to say it than that, but it's, it's all him. I mean, he's amazing. He's got a great team, but this guy, you know, he sees the path and, you know, he's, he's been awesome. You and Christian can actually have conversations about Puerto Rican grandmas. Right, yeah, we talk about that. (laughs) The first time we recorded this, we talked about that a lot. (laughs) Yeah. That'll be dope. So, what is that? So, with this food, what what do we have next here? So, this is um, pork cheek uh, gnocchi. So, uh, pork cheek, if you've never had it. Dude, this I've gnocchi, always seen it on Top Chef, and I'm so excited. So, so excited. The gnocchi is made fresh every uh, every day. It's fucking delicious. My wife said, if this comes off the menu, Brian is going to get it. Wow. All right, so Brian's so a wrap. I'm telling you, man. She eats this shit every time. How do you eat and it? And then there's a, like a yeah, regular four? And there's a six-minute egg on top. What's a six-minute egg? So it's a par-cooked egg where it's nice and runny. Um, I would say mix all that in so you get a good bite of, like, kind of everything. Oh, 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 oh bust, it, bust, bust it, it? Bust it. Bust it wide open. open. <laughs> 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 Guys, I, I think it's bust it. There's no T. The T is silent. <laughs> bust you. You it. You are correct. Sorry. I, I watch TikTok, so, you know. <laughs> is that I watch TikTok? <laughs> oh, man. All right, hold up. I want to get a bite of this, yo. This is definitely not like the Indiana Jones uh, tartar earlier. This is a little more. It's still adventurous, but not quite as much. But yeah, it's funny. Anytime somebody's like, oh, man, the food is amazing. I'm like, yeah, the food is almost as good as the beer. And sometimes I think it's much better. Let's see. <laughs> I saw the. <laughs> <laughs> it's Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. <laughs> not bad. 
I could eat that whole thing. I'm telling you, that's <laughs> that's my wife's favorite. She loves the shit. Damn, what is it? So the little peppers. Oh, like cooking, cooking. So right the little peppers on there, they add the, a perfect amount of like lift. It's got like a little citrus yeah, uh, and a little bit of a uh, little heat. Oh my I love god, it. that was delicious. Oh my god, bro. You said it was pork cheek, right? Pork cheek. Pork cheek. Pork why? Cheek. Why is it the cheek of every animal was like the best piece of meat? Oh, well, that's cheek that's and tongue. Smile energy goes. Oh, oh yeah. smile energy. <laughs> che- cheek and tongue. Mm. Some of my favorites. Some lingua. Lingua. That's right. Talk that talk. <clears throat> oh, that's, oh that's, good. that's good. That's really good. What's that called? Uh, this is the um, pork cheek gnocchi. Oh my god. I love. Oh. I love the little chilies Ooh. on there. Uh-oh. This is, this is Alan. Shouts out to Alan, this piece. This is what I'm talking Thank about. Thank you, sir. Oh, with the glassware. Shout out to good, good word and good hospitality. Thank you, Alan. Thank you perfect. very much. So that, that, was, that. that was Alan. What Alan's one of the home, oh, homies Alan. here. Also, outside Bro, of the beer and the really food, good, good word makes excellent, good. excellent cocktails. Yes. Thank you, yes. yes. Excellent it's cocktails. Cocktails, too. Yep. Oh, Alan and Io and uh, Paige. I mean, the whole bar staff is amazing. Absolutely. Oh, my God. And That's mad good. One thing that I like to always mention is that this downtown Duluth area, it's open container. Right? Open container. People forget that shit. Open that container. So open good. container. So you can come here, grab a beer, and just yep. and walk around. Just go walk around. You can walk with uh, plastic can or cans. Water. Are in the streets, <laughs> you know, whatever. Oh, I mean, yeah. yes, the water fountain. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Yeah. They close the streets a lot, how, though, and kids can walk right over. You want to watch your kids That's while drinking, you know. Part of the know. original yeah. business plan, Justin, Sometimes was we wanted to have <laughs> Good Word and then like a playground <laughs> right outside. Like that was part of the the business plan. Like we were like, how much does a playground cost? We want a fucking playground. So yeah. part of the appeal was like. Well, Duluth is open container, and this is such a family-friendly uh, area. This shit is dope. All the time. Like, that, that, that's become, like, our weekly or weekend routine. Yeah. Obviously, we see y'all every weekend because we come here for brunch. Right. Crack a few. You were here twice pins. two weeks ago, I think. <laughs> yeah. In the same day, yes. Yeah. Wow. We came earlier. We went home. We are like, oh, fuck it. We'll get some more. And came back. <laughs> nice. But on, on the weekends as well, Saturdays, like you said, it's a great family place. Yeah. Overtain, we come here, get some food or drinks, both. Go sit out in the uh, the Lawn. the grass yeah, the or whatever. Yeah, square. Yeah, or what is town green? Yeah, it's yeah. a big fountain like Chris was saying. The kids play in the water. Yeah, sit down with a blanket or whatnot, drink, chill. Everybody kids get worn hydrated. out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's a it's a perfect area. Yeah, I dig it. Now, can you tell it? Do you know what we're drinking? Based oh yeah. On? So that what you have right there is called uh, "Only Memories Remain," which is named after my morning jacket song. I should have had that one. It's a four point four percent Tomavi Lesak, which is a, a dark Czech lager. It's four point four percent. And Myron, you have "Any Day Now," which is an Italian style pilsner. It's basically a dry hop pilsner with a uh, middle frow. This is uh, Isabella, which is a uh, traditional as fuck half of Weizen. And then, mm. Justin, I think that that is Digital Comforts, which is our 3.9% English Best Bitter. I'm still this on the pills, dokey. Though. It doesn't matter what I'm drinking. Them. You know, everything's just amazing. I feel like over the past few years, uh, more traditional styles of beer have become more popular. Yeah. Your, your pills, your lagers. Right. You know, going back to the roots of brewing. I agree. I mean, honestly, it's, it's become a big... I mean, for us, we always wanted to do a little bit... Uh, so, at Brickstore, there's like... 30 taps. We had 29 taps, I think it was. Mm-hmm. So we wanted, it was a very rounded list, right? Little Yes is lots of Belgian beer, and we don't do a ton of that. We make like one or two Belgian style beers here. But anyway, when you look at their beer list, it's like super well rounded. It had something for everybody. And so as a brew pub, we're like, well, fuck, we, we need to have a well rounded list. So yeah. we always wanted to have, you know, lagers and English beer, as well as IPAs and Saison, stuff that we were drinking, but also stuff that we knew that, you know, somebody who has been drinking for a uh, beer for a long time, like I can appreciate classic style, but also somebody who's like, you know, I like trendy shit. I want to drink a fruited sour. So we make fruited sours and hazy IPAs too. It's just not for for me. A balanced beer menu doesn't mean twelve fucking fruited sours or twelve hazy IPAs. It's like no, you got like sixteen, eighteen. You know, just do it really good. Do it really good. Yeah. So we've got. I think we have uh, five or six lagers on right now. Four English beers, uh, two different hoppy uh, beers. 
uh, Saison, and um, I think we still have a stout on. But, I mean, you know, it's a little bit for everybody, and that's how I look at it. It's like we're a community place, and we want to represent the community, and the community hopefully doesn't all drink the same shit. <laughs> and we can come here and watch the games, right? Fuck yeah, you can. Oh, we were against it at first. I was. I, I was like, no I TVs. It was like, good word. We just talk. We don't have TVs. Yes, <laughs> it's true. We did a bunch of silly videos for the shit. And then, uh, you know, it was what, like, what well, team, it's what slow. Team, what team does a uh, good word support? Whatever team you want to come watch, dog. Okay. Oh, however, I however. Tried to, I tried to get him. I know <laughs> Ryan, Ryan is a big, big supporter of Atlanta United. Uh, yeah, yeah, for Big sure. Support. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Atlanta United. That's the one here. part. That's the yes. one team everybody in Atlanta like goes with, though. You got to. It, it's Atlanta. It was born here. Like, yeah, it's dope. And it's a plus winning team. Get, plus, they took the, uh, the, championship they won the championship to to the strip club. Well, that's about as Atlanta. Well, where exactly. else would you, you, you go? To. You got, you got to. Like, People where just else put it, take it home? I don't no, know. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you go to Magic City or Onyx. I think they went to Magic City. They took Are it to Magic City. Falcons games? Uh, yeah, all the games. I mean, any game that's going to be on, we fucking throw it on. And we actually do a wing feature while the games are on. Say what? Yes. I'm sorry. What'd you say? I'm sorry. So what'd you say? Yeah. What yeah. just happened? Uh, six what wings, fries, and a beer for uh, like 15 bucks. Yeah, we're doing oh, that. Oh, nice. Six wings, yeah. fries, and a beer for 15 <laughs> bucks? Yeah, any, any, first, any beer. <laughs> the first. Uh, and it's not like a... Sp- 10 ounce pour, it's like whatever the fucking size it comes in, that's what yeah. you're gonna get. Oh, we're doing oh, that. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you told me. That. I'm glad I said it. I will see you Sunday, sir. All right. <laughs> Falcons play on Sunday at 1 o'clock, by it's the way. Popping off. Nice. It's closed, Good word. Awesome. Falcons. So, so, where did good word come from? The, the name. The name. Yes. Um, the short answer is it came from a sex message between me and uh, Ryan Skinner. We uh, we say word a lot, and uh, that's the short answer. But really, good word is like it's kind of like the saying, like you know, what's a good word? Um, oh, what's a good word? Yeah, oh, like like gotcha, a greeting, gotcha. you know. So yeah, yeah. it really goes back to like creating this environment for um, people just to come and enjoy themselves and like relax and, and have whatever time they're gonna have, whether they're celebrating or they're commiserating or. You know, whatever the fuck it is, anniversary, you know, whatever yeah, your yeah. time. We're just here to be a, a backdrop and, you know, kind of support whatever experience you're trying to have. So it has nothing to do with the Bible. No. Because <laughs> we are in the Bible Belt. Ain't nothing we're wrong with that. Belt. We have lots like of the good words. Yeah. I, oh, yes. I didn't even think about that. So I didn't either <laughs> until after the fact. Somebody was like, are y'all from tech or are y'all just religious? It's like, oh, neither one. But uh, ain't nothing wrong with religion. <laughs> like, hey, brother. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh. Yeah. And we, you know, and that's the thing. So that's why, you know, for us, it's like we just want to be whatever you want us to be. We don't, we don't have to be this thing that you have to like because we represent this or that. We just want to re- represent the community. And that's why we're, we're such a, um, you know, if you look at our staff, it, it represents the community we're in. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's why we don't ever, like, put our allegiances to anything and, you know, if you're a religious, cool. Hopefully, I didn't offend you. Or if you're a sports <laughs> fanatic, cool. As a you know. staunch Catholic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's probably probably it because I was uh, raised Catholic, too. And I go to yeah. church every now and then. But I'm not religious, you know, uh, in any way. And their name is not Your religion religious. Your religion is beer now. Yeah. Beer is my, yes, beer oh, is my chapel. <laughs> yes. So it's kind of like a, um, a safe space for anybody who likes good beer, good food, or just a good time. Exactly that. And Christian, I want you to say that and look right at the camera. <laughs> and we're going to use that shit on my Instagram. <laughs> Do that shit. One more time. Are we, how are you look? Ready? You ready? Here we go. Here we go. We're right on them. Good Word is a safe space for anybody who likes good beer, good food, and a good time. Fuck yeah. Cheers. Hey, thank you. Cheers. Boom. Cheers. Boom. Thank okay. you so much, sir. We, we, we need, we need to uh, go to the next thing because this. Yeah, it's time to eat. Yeah, we devoured that. Yeah, let's move these tables. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting us and letting us uh, do all this. Stuff here. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> and um, we're gonna uh, we're gonna eat. Peace. Thank y'all.